Today, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite tools. Uh, I use this on just about every project I work on, and I've had it for years and years. But I think this is new to some people, and so I wanted to show how I use it to get the most accurate markings for my buttonholes. So most people will just pull this open, lay it down on their garment and mark the buttonholes. But that's not really the best way. If you look at it from this angle, you can see that there are markings on this side. And that helps you get your buttons and buttonhole placements aligned properly. So for this demonstration, I printed out a pattern of mine, the back of it, and I didn't put any buttonholes on so I can show you because sometimes you're going to need to lengthen a bodice for a child that's uh, tall, and in that case, you're going to need to redistribute the buttonhole markings, and you want to wonder how to do that accurately. So I have found this is the most accurate tool for doing that. Now, when you look at this back bodice, you see the center back line, and then this is your seam line. This is the lap portion. And this lap is a half an inch. So that means that I am using half inch buttons because whatever the lap is, that is the size buttons you're supposed to be using. So because I'm using a half inch button, the other thing you want to keep in mind is then from the back neck at the center back, you want to come down a half an inch for your first buttonhole. And by the same token, at the waistline seam allowance, you want to go up a half an inch from that. So those are your first two markers for the buttons. And you'll notice that I have them inside of this center back. You always if, want to go forward or closer into the lap by one eighth of an inch to get um, proper alignment for your buttons. So I've got my bottom button and my top button marked. Then what I'm going to do, and I'll turn this sideways so that you can see better. The best way to use this is not just to pull it out because mine is well worn and the joints might, might not be as tight, so it may not be quite as accurate to just pull this, uh, the amount that you need. What you want to do is extend it to its full width, position your first button, and then if I want three buttons on this, I'm going to slowly retract it until that lower one reaches right there. So this would then be the place where I need my next buttonhole if I were going to do three buttons. If I were going to do four buttons, which I wouldn't on something this small, but if I were, I would just extend it or reduce the width so that you get the four buttonholes marked. Now the other nice thing about this is when you're actually working on a garment and you're going to determine, you would still mark your top and your bottom buttonhole location, but then you would be working with the finished garment. So let's pretend we're finished here. And then you would do the same thing, but you can go to the edge and my dotted line there is what would be the fold of the uh, back of the dress there. And you would, again, close this up until it's the proper, until both the top and the bottom one are properly um, positioned. And then you can see you've got your mark, and this half inch mark is exactly on this half inch center back line, which is what you would expect. You can put your mark inside there, remove this, and then you would take your blue washout marker and you would use your ruler and go forward an eighth of an inch and then draw in your half inch button 
line. So obviously on fabric, I would be using my blue washout marker. Um, I did it with red ink here so that you could see it for this. Another area, if you're sewing for yourself and doing women's clothes, sometimes the buttonhole pl placement on the pattern isn't ideal for your body shape. Um, you know how you end up with gaps if, if you've got the section, if this were to be the apex of your bust line, if a button is positioned up here and down here, you end up frequently with a gap here. And so for that woman, you may want to use this to reposition so that you're going to have one buttonhole right there at the apex of your bust line. And then again, you would do the same thing. You would extend it all the way first. And then with that one in line, you would start to close up the Simplex ruler so that you could get your buttonhole placement. That's the easiest way um, to use this. I also use it for things like if I had decided I wanted to add, say, tucks to the back of this bodice. Uh, odd numbers always look better than even numbers, and so I might draw a line across the top of the pattern piece here, and then I might want three tucks, and you want them evenly distributed between the center back and your shoulder seam. So again, I would open this all the way, position the first mark at the shoulder seam line, and then I'm going to close it until I get three marks inside and this other one is resting on the center back. So in this case, you can mark inside here or if you prefer, you can just put little marks up in the notch up here. Um, that would be where I would then draw my lines in to add for if I was going to do some sort of tuck and obviously you're going to have to alter your whole pattern but this is how you would get it positioned correctly and that's an easier way than trying to do all the math. Um, I don't excel at math and this is just a wonderful way to eliminate all that math thinking. So I'll put a link to this below. It's kind of like a microwave. Uh, before you had a microwave, you didn't know how useful it would be. After you had a microwave, you couldn't live without it. That's the way I feel about this. It's not, um, it's something I use on most projects, and I wouldn't want to be without it. So that's your little tip for your Simflex gauge. If you wish to continue seeing more of these videos as I produce them, please consider hitting the subscribe button.